Uh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, uh, thank you for showing up for the last talk of this KubeCon. Uh, so my name is Si Yuan, and uh, I'm working as a software engineer from Google. And I'm Bogdan. I'm a software engineer at Apple. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, unleash the power of SCD, uh, the potentials and constraints of an extensible uh, SCD. So the, mm, the idea of this talk is, so we all know that SCD uses uh, Bboat as its uh, persistence uh, storage, but we're just wondering uh, why and uh, could it be something else? So uh, this talk is just uh, entertaining this idea of maybe we should make the backend of SCD more extensible and try something else. So in this talk, we'll cover some uh, background knowledge and then uh, introduce how we, uh, on our side, how we extend the SCD backend. And then uh, we'll share some results of uh, the benchmark performance of three backends we have tried and then uh, dive deep into the CPU and memory profiling of these three backends. Okay, so initially we're gonna go through some background knowledge for those people who are new to HCD or don't work on HCD all their day. Um, so here's the, so HCD is the uh, strongly consistent key value store and uh, uh, it uses Ruft uh, to achieve that strong consistency. So a lot of HCD architecture is around Ruft um, and uh, since it's a key value store, it also has its own MVCC implementation that is backed by embedded uh, Bold DB uh, or BBOLT uh, database. Uh, and then also a lot of logic uh, in etcd is dealing with peer communication, uh, which is also part of Ruft. So let's uh, look at the uh, typical write flow, which is on the leader. Um, so the main I'm not going to go through all the uh, numbers, but one thing I'm going to want to really focus on is to showcase that uh, there are two streams of work. There's that number three persistence uh, to a transaction to a wall, which is basically uh, right into write ahead log, and uh, that's a requirement uh, uh, that is coming from Ruft. And then there's also uh, a write to the MVCC backend that uh, then asynchronously will write to the BBOLT. So MVCC stands for multi-version concurrency control and basically it gives us history of the revisions of the uh, uh, keys. Let's look at also typical uh, read flow. So this one is simpler. Uh, we don't need to write any, of course, like writing this into wall, but we still need to um, make sure that uh, we are reading the correct index. Uh, so that's why there is that uh, get uh, read index. Uh, but most of the work is done on the MVCC layer and uh, that's where we get our key values. Um, so next we're gonna dive in into the uh, MVCC portion a little bit more. Try to explain it here. Uh, so here is the uh, data model that uh, um, MVCC uh, implementation of etcd uses. Um, etcd has its own in-memory tree index that basically maps uh, revisions of the uh, of the values and key values to uh, uh, that basically maps the um, key values to revisions and uh, manages the sort of history of of the revisions for the for the certain uh, key, and then when we go to the backend, which is BoldDB, that, that part doesn't really know about uh, uh, versions, and we just uh, store uh, uh, these revisions uh, as sort of uh, key values in the, in the BBOLT. And uh, this index will be referenced uh, uh, further in the pre presentation during some of the performance uh, uh, benchmarks. Um, 
Okay, so uh, let's talk about why uh, Bbolt uh, was chosen as the MVCC backend for etcd. So etcd is a, a pretty old project, so uh, the, the, the decision to use uh, Bbolt was made uh, back in 2015. And uh, sort of some of the requirements were to have the backend uh, in Go, uh, you know, to obviously to, to have a reliable backend, uh, predictable performance, and the uh, non-blocking snapshot. Uh, this is for uh, for the situation when you need to do a snapshot of the backend when you are doing writes or reads, and uh, the snapshotting part is, is used uh, uh, as uh, one of the design features of etcd. And then last, uh, uh, we wanted to store uh, about like 10 million uh, key values of uh, approximately one kilobyte, so it sort of adds up to 10 gigabytes of data. This was, I think, mainly driven by Kubernetes uh, requirements uh, back in the day. Uh, so people then did some performance testing of Bbolt or was like, compared with Bitcask and, and LevelDB, and they uh, uh, went with the Bbolt. And one advantage is also that Bbolt is using B trees, uh, uh, and they are uh, better for random reads compared to other databases that a lot of them use LSM trees. Um, so let me also highlight some key concepts of Bbolt. Um, so there's there's maybe a little bit of a name conclusion uh, confusion because we call it Bbolt, but sometimes also referenced to as BoltDB. Uh, so, etcd uh, maintains a fork of BoltDB, which we call Bbolt. Um, the original uh, BoltDB project is archived. Uh, so, since it was archived, we people in the etcd community fixed uh, uh, bugs and added uh, uh, sort of some some new features, some improvements. So, it's actually uh, actively developing. Um, so, what is uh, Bbolt? It's a key value store. Uh, it has uh, transaction support, which is important for etcd. And it uses B3, B3s, as I mentioned prior. And a very interesting feature, it's, it uses a memory mapped uh, uh, file as the uh, uh, as a key concept uh, of uh, how Bbolt uh, stores values. It, it was largely in, uh, inspired by uh, uh, Lightning DB, LMDB. Um, so now we're going to focus on that uh, memory mapped uh, file feature and the uh, actual memory usage of the Bbolt. So nowadays uh, people face uh, new challenges with etcd and uh, Kubernetes. So on, on one hand, uh, we have uh, systems that are trying to go for as, as minimal requirements as possible. Uh, for example, Edge or uh, um, some systems with uh, special uh, requirements uh, embedded maybe. And uh, AIML where people just want uh, uh, more storage for their special workloads. Uh, let's dive in a little bit more here. So systems with uh, low uh, requirements. So important part that we can change is that uh, uh, fast disk uh, performance is required by Raft because we have to f-sync on every write. Uh, and if you don't do that, then you break uh, uh, Raft uh, consistency guarantees. So we can't remove that. But uh, most of the people nowadays run uh, etcd uh, to, uh, so backend fits in memory. Uh, so that memory mapped file is, is, uh, uh, is always in memory. You don't do any uh, page eviction and so on. Uh, so then the question becomes, can we reduce the memory consumption? Uh, I want to highlight here, this is one of the uh, recent papers that was published by a group in the CMU. And uh, I didn't reproduce the results, but uh, uh, it's sort of interesting that uh, they are saying that uh, 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 memory mapped uh, uh, files maybe not uh, that good for uh, uh, for databases. Uh, so one thing they highlight is that there's it's hard to achieve uh, transactional safety. This I believe actually doesn't apply for etcd because we have a single writer uh, situation. Uh, but the Two other items uh, uh, will potentially apply if we try to go uh, beyond the memory available in the system, which is uh, having sort of slow I.O. on page faults and when you need to evict and access uh, evicted pages. And then they also did some testing on the uh, NVMEs, and they claim that uh, uh, when you use uh, MMAP 
the databases, memory of databases, you might have uh, issues with uh, throughput, uh, and this is related to uh, some CPU uh, uh, caching. Uh, this will be interesting to replicate. Again, haven't replicated this. And for uh, AI ML systems, the, uh, the problem is the opposite. So people want uh, uh, sort of uh, more uh, storage. And like we actually can have systems with, you know, well, like it, we can, but it's hard to just provision systems with like 10 gigabytes of memory. Uh, and also there are some other issues that we'll, we'll talk about during the performance test and not why it's difficult to, uh, to go higher. Um. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, so, so in order to um, plug in back different backends for SCD, uh, what we have done is first we uh, we made an interface to extend the SCD backend. Uh, we call ESCD. So uh, this work is prototyped by Han, uh, my colleague, and uh, so basically we extracted uh, three. Uh, backend interfaces out of the SCD code base. So the first one is the database interface, and the second one is the transaction interface, and then the lowest one is the bucket interface that directly talks with the uh, backend database. So uh, with, this, with these interfaces, so we implemented these interfaces for uh, two other uh, database backends so uh, and then we ran a bunch of benchmarks to evaluate their performance so the three backends we're comparing are bboat uh, sqlite and badger so the setup uh, we have tried is uh, just for one server cluster and then we run the benchmark uh, we run the different servers in in Docker and uh, with different memory constraints. So one is a uh, very limited uh, memory, four, four gigabytes for uh, up to 10 gigabytes of data. And then the second one is with enough memory, that's uh, 12 gigabytes of memory for up to 10 gigabytes of total data. And we also run the benchmark for different key value uh, ratio, size ratios. So uh, the first one is uh, like the key value size are comparable, and the second one is key size is ten one tenth of value size, and the last one is like you have a very small key size and then very big uh, value size. So uh, the first slide is on about the right benchmark. So we can see like overall, uh, Bboat has a similar performance as Badger, and then uh, SQLite, it's much slower in, in writes. So uh, this might be a little unexpected because we would expect Badger to have better uh, write performance because it's a append-only uh, writes. And another uh, interesting thing is the first, the, on, the, the graph on the top left. Uh, so this is when the memory is really constrained, and then the special thing about this graph is the key index. So when you write uh, a total of like four or five gigabytes of data into it, the the, the key index si key index itself is taking almost all the memories. So that's why it uh, gets slowed down even for for all the three backends. And uh, oh, okay. I forgot to mention that uh, in all these benchmarks, uh, we're using uh, we're not uh, the expert of Badger or SQLite, so their their settings might not be optimized. Uh, so this might not represent the best performance of Badger or uh, SQLite. So uh, the second slide is about the range uh, benchmark. So uh, from these graphs, we can see that uh, Bboat is actually the best in terms of random reads. And uh, SQLite is really slow, but uh, Badger lies, it's about 50 to 60% of the performance, the speed, read speed of 
uh, be bold. And again, the same pattern shows up in terms of when the key index is consuming all the memory, then everything just slows down. And this is another important uh, benchmark. So uh, this is when you load uh, a DB file, direct, a data, when you start a database directly from already uh, existing database files, how long it takes for the server to boot up. So uh, for Badger and uh, SQLite, uh, it's pretty much linear with the uh, size of the DB file. But for one thing interesting to see is for Bboat, when the memory is small, once that the total uh, DB file size it's close to the memory size, it takes forever to load uh, the database from the file. And in, some, in a lot of cases, it takes hours to wait for the server to start up. And then uh, when the memory is really constrained uh, with like really approaching the key index size, then everything just takes forever, which is the top first uh, graph, top left graph. Okay, and uh, so there are also several questions we we were baffled about why why the badger is not faster in writes, and and then uh, where. What's the difference in terms of range speed between Badger and uh, Bboat? So where is the gap? So we look deep into the CPU and memory profiling of these operations. So the first one is the uh, write CPU profile. So you can see that the majority uh, for Bboat, uh, so you can see the majority of the time is spent on SCD related operations. Uh, rather on Raft or other system calls, only 1.5% of the time is spent directly talking to Bboat backend. So, and this is very similar to uh, Badger. So that can explain why it's like, as long as Bboat is fast enough, it's very hard. It's very hard to like further increase the write uh, speed. Uh, yeah, it's hard to, uh, there's not much improvement for writes, but you can really slow it down with SQLite. So because we are, for SQLite, for each write, we have to issue a new query to the backend. And then this is the range CPU profile. So um, like for Bboat, about a third of the time is spent on searching for the keys and get the values. And then for Badger, uh, a chunk of the time is spent to find the key. And then another uh, big chunk of time is actually spent to get retrieve the values uh, from the value log, because value is not stored in the, in the uh, SM tree. It's actually stored in the, in the log. So uh, we think that's why it's uh, slower for uh, Badger for read. And again, for uh, SQLite, this is just a, a very slow uh, database. And then uh, we also look at the memory profile. So this is the memory profile after loading of 18 million key values uh, of database file. So you can see like majority of the memory is spent on the key index, and then also uh, the, the memory assigned to uh, re rebuild the index from the entire DB file. So across three different backends, the memory uh, usage is pretty similar. And uh, what's not reflected in here is the MMAP used by Bboat, because it's a system, uh, the, the system uh, like kind of determines what it uses. So uh, Golan doesn't really have any visibility on how much uh, memory is used by a map. 
Okay, uh, so with all these, uh, we have some takeaway message. Uh, so the first question is, is there any value in extensible SED? Uh, we think so. Uh, we, because like right now the use cases for Kubernetes is very diverse. So maybe for if you're optimizing for speed, Bboat is still the best choice. But you might have different requirements. You might not. You can maybe uh, tolerate a little performance, uh, lower performance. But you really care about memory size, then you might want to try some other backends. And also, maybe you don't want to use a map for the reasons that Bogdan has mentioned. So uh, that's also another reason to use uh, ESCD. And then the second question is, can we, uh, with extended SCD, can we scale SCD up into like the terabytes region? Um, the answer, we think, is to some extent, but there are still limits. So the first limit is uh, there's like the way SD operates is it needs to send the leader sends the snapshot of the database to the follower if a new follower joins or if the, uh, the follower is falling back, falling uh, behind. So there's still latency sending large uh, snapshots between members. And the second one is like as we have seen in the prof, uh, in the uh, benchmarks that. Uh, SCD is still using a lot of memory in the in key index. So if your memory is small, then that would really slow things down. So to extend, to scale up SCD, uh, another approach might be uh, uh, sharding by, like, uh, for, for example, for Kubernetes resources. And then uh, lastly, uh, about the future plans for ESCD. Uh, so currently, um, the SCD community is just trying to stabilize the whole code base for SCD. So we're, we're, this will not be a priority for SCD uh, to get it on to 3.6. But uh, if you have a really strong use case for it, then we can talk, and then maybe we can come up with a plan. Yep, thank you. So I want to reiterate that uh, uh, we're looking for feedback from the community. If there's enough uh, diverse sort of representative from different companies who will reach out to the community and uh, say that this is a valid use case for them, uh, they'll probably be, uh, this will probably be a bump in the priority. And we're also looking for contributors. So uh, etcd community is uh, right now uh, has a roadmap and uh, just maybe doesn't have time to uh, focus on, on this. And uh, I think this is pretty interesting work. So if people want to contribute and they have the use case, uh, please reach out. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. OK, any questions? Does this okay? Um, so one of the problems that I was facing at my earlier uh, employer was that we were trying to run multiple control planes using the same etcd, uh, but we were worried about the noisy neighbor problem because there was not it was not possible to limit the use, resource usage of a specific control plane in the that etcd. Would the extensibility story help us? To make sure, like you know, hey, this path uh, uses only that much resource, and it doesn't um, make noise for the others. Uh, just want to get an idea, like how extensible it would be, or like you know, how configurable that is. Uh, so this this effort is mainly about uh, extending the backend, like make it more uh, accessible for different use cases. But for multi-tenancy use case, it's more about the intake control of SCD itself. So that's not a part of this extensible SCD? Yeah, so the answer is uh, probably not. But there is uh, effort or issues open about rate limiting. So if you uh, 
you know interested in that's uh, your use case you should definitely comment on those issues um, thanks okay anybody else who's uh, like in general uh, uh, show me, a, like, a raise your hand if you interested in trying out the etcd with a different backend, uh, if it was available. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs>